Hey, Sun here. I'm a privacy and security researcher, and you're watching The Privacy Guides. In today's episode, I want to talk about something that I'm really worried about. And I think for some reason, uh, Bitcoin Core 30 might allow for Bitcoin to be exploited in a way that makes it the darkest of dark webs. Uh, hear me out. How Bitcoin works is really a peer-to-peer -peer network. Uh, you and I running nodes can broadcast transactions for ourselves or for our peers. Uh, and once transactions are broadcasted, they go through the mempool all the way to miners who then make sure that its consensus is valid uh, and has enough of a fee to incentivize them to mine it, therefore permanently writing that transaction to the Bitcoin blockchain. A block is then on the tip it's then propagated to everyone's nodes, and that's how people running full nodes have a full copy of the Bitcoin blockchain, confirming the integrity for everyone. Uh, now, the mempool itself broadcasts transactions that are consensus valid and that have a large enough fee to remain in people's mempools. Now, my understanding, and if this is factually incorrect, please let me know in the comments and I'll create an episode saying that I'm sorry and I'll correct what I'm about to say. My understanding is if a transaction is consensus valid and if it has a large enough fee, a larger fee than all other transactions in the mempool, it will remain in the mempool until it gets mined. Now, no miner in their right mind would want to include CP, CSAM, classified information or any other illegal material into a block. It would make them complicit it would open them up to liability. Therefore, I think if Bitcoin 30 has a large opportunity and starts including more arbitrary data on the blockchain, well, as a result, miners are gonna start filtering for that and not writing said information to the blockchain if it's nefarious. The problem is everyone running full nodes, you and I, will be relaying that information. And if the transaction fee is large enough, my understanding is we'll be relaying it for longer. Now, everyone running full nodes should be running them over Tor. The reason is if you broadcast a transaction, you don't want to correlate that transaction to your actual IP address. That's this really privacy 101. I have a guide on how to run node using Docker on Mac OS. I'll link to it down there in the description, but it defaults to using Tor and that's all well. The problem is if I'm someone planning to exploit that change, the fact that I can have a large op return with a large fee but it won't be mined because no miners in their right mind will ever want to mine that transaction. Well, I can then start leveraging the mempool as perhaps the darkest of dark webs. The reason is, well, I can then pull my node offline and destroy the private key and its data, uh, therefore no longer seeding it, but everyone running a full node might still be distributing it. And that potentially makes it so that you and I running full nodes could be held liable, although that's to be explored. Uh, now, the Bitcoin core team has not only increased op return uh, true data carrier size to 100,000 bytes, it had, and I say had because I think that might have been rolled back, they also had deprecated the data carrier size, allowing you and I to actually filter out this stuff, therefore not participating in its distribution, therefore making it a lot less liable to us. Um, but I mean, it kind of blows my mind that something as unnecessary as large op returns, something that is so contentious is potentially making its way to production. It's, it's just irresponsible. I just beg developers behind core to take a breather Let's slow this down. Let's make sense of it. It doesn't have to make its way to production immediately. I'm sure there's good reasons why one would want to increase op return, but let's have a fair debate. Let's give it time, seeing how contentious it is. Um, and also let's address the attack surface that that is creating in the context of Bitcoin. It's really unnecessary. The problem is that in the context of Tor, if I want to host illicit material, I have to set up a server, establish an onion service, uh, and then participate on the Tor network, making that information available, seeding it. If that server is offline, 
while the service is offline. I'm not leveraging other people's Tor nodes as, you know, relays. Like if I'm offline, it's offline. The problem with the Bitcoin mempool in the way that I understand it is if I set a large fee, I can then push data to people who want to consume it in a way where the data will never be mined. Therefore, I'm kind of exploiting everyone's mempools as free storage and a free relay service for potential data that could be quite horrible. Um, so I really hope that we slow things down. We have a fair debate. As technologists, we have responsibilities. Uh, sometimes we need to slow down to really rethink it through. I think it's irresponsible to allow something like this on the Bitcoin network. I think it's not what Bitcoin is intended for. And I really don't see how Bitcoin as a whole could benefit from this increased attack surface. Um, anyways, that's all I had for you. I wanted to share this. Hopefully tomorrow we won't see a V30 release and the conversation will be able to mature enough uh, to a point where we will reach consensus. But right now, people are just beating each other up. It's not necessary. Okay, I'll see you in the next one.